Welcome to this instructional video. We're going to be modeling a greenhouse using Structure 3D, highlighting some useful tools and tips. This video is going to coincide with the modeling a greenhouse article on the website. The only difference will be that we'll be using Imperial units and AISC shapes. We're going to focus on the generation of the geometry and application of the materials and sections, but not necessarily the application of the loads. Make sure to read along with the modeling a greenhouse article on our website. The greenhouse type structure we're going to create consists of horizontal purlins, primary beams, vertical posts, and bracing systems. The purlins are used to dis distribute the vertical loads as well as the upward and inward wind loads acting on the roof to the primary beams. For this reason, moment connections are typically used to connect the purlins and the primary beams. The posts in our structure should be able to transfer the loads to the ground without buckling. And so with a little background about our structure, let's start modeling it. With most structures, if you have a vertical profile that is of unique geometry, uh, I recommend modeling that in 2D first, then you can use the duplication properties that we offer. Let's start by anchoring our first node at 0, 0, 0. And again, we're going to be modeling in 2D space. So we're going to be using the XY plane to model our 2D portion of our structure. Then we'll extend it out in 3D and uh, use our duplicate function. We're going to be using the pen tool to draw the majority of our members. But before we do that, let's go to our snapping options and change our snap size from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. This will make it easier to get the scale that we want. So now, now making sure we have the pen tool selected. So we're going to start by clicking the node one and then moving our node or our pen up and down. We can see that it's moving at the snap distance every so often here. And we're going to actually, for the first member, we're going to type in 10 feet. And now we have a little bit of a scale. So now we can actually start modeling our, the orthogonal portions of our structure. If we come down to node one, we can come across and go to four feet. Uh, because it's a multiple of our snap distance, that being 0.5 feet, we can just snap to 4 feet. You can always type in the number 4, but we're going to use the actual pen tool to draw it. And then we'll go up to 7.5 feet, make a point, and then come across to our original member, and once it highlights, we'll click on that. And now we've created the first part of our orthogonal profile here. And if you look at the article, we do have a sloped part up here, and then it slopes down this way. So to make a slope part of a member, let me go back to the front. We can use a couple of different options. Both ways are going to take advantage of the relative member function. So to get to that, click on this node up here, and then click on R. So what the relative member function does is it creates a member between your current node's location and the change or delta in that location to the node uh, where you want the other end of the member to be. So for example, if we knew the change in X and change in Y of this sloped ridge up here, we can type that in right now. So for our project, our change in X is 6.75 feet, and our change in Y is 1.5 feet. We can see that as we type it in, it's going to identify not only the, the hypotenuse length, but it's going to shadow the end position of the node. And all we need to do is click on the, the green check, and now we have our first half of our slope roof there. The other way to do it would be to use the relative member function again, but this would be under the pretense that you knew what the angle would be or the slope and you knew what the length of it would be. And you actually, you wouldn't necessarily need to know the length, but I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So we'll go to one of these three options here, each representing a plane that you want to generate the member in. So because we're in the XY plane, we want to generate a relative member in the XY plane. And now instead of having the delta values, we simply need to put the angle and the length of the member. So we know that from the article, uh, the kind of the shape of our, our structure slopes down like this, and then the column comes down to the bottom here. So in our case, our angle is always measured from the x, y, positive x spot. So if you look at the coordinates here, it starts at zero and then goes around clockwise. So because we want it to go down in this direction, we need it to be in the two between 270 and 360 degrees. And we've identified that our slope here is around 20 degrees. So what we can do is we can type in 340, since that would be 360 minus 20 degrees sloping down this way. And then we don't necessarily know the end length, but we can put a very large length to start. And we just want to make sure we have our thing selected here. We can see that obviously it's not going to be 50 feet long, but we can use some other tools to help remedy that in the end. So we're going to hit OK. We have our extended member there. Now let's continue modeling the structure. So what we'll do is we have our one of our beams coming across here and intersecting with this roof member. We don't know where that is. How can we figure that out? 
we can use our relative member function again. So what we need to do is click on member node 4 here, click on R, and rather than using our relative member function, or excuse me, the XY or XZ function, go back to relative member. We know that our delta X is going to be somewhere in here. We don't know exactly where, but we know our delta Y and delta Z will be 0 and 0. So if we type in a delta X value of, say, 30, obviously we're going way past where we need to be. But if we click OK, we have our two members generated here. Now what we can use is the intersect tool. So select one member, hit Control or Command, hit the other, num other member, right click, and select intersect members. Now we didn't need to know exactly where this coordinate is. We can see it sits at about 17 and three quarters uh, in the X and then seven, seven and a half in the, in the Y direction. But now we can just use our highlighting tools and get rid of the rest of it. And now we can start to model some of the interior bracing members and just some of the interior profile of our structure here. So we'll go back to the pen tool and we'll start drawing those in. Press escape, come over to node four and come up to this member. We can see that because the snap point on the member is actually fairly close to a node that we already have, it's most likely going to uh, put the node here where it's forecasting it, but that's a quick fix for us. We just need to cancel out of this, grab these two members, intersect them, and now we can just delete this little extra here. Yep, go back to the pen tool, and let's continue drawing. So as we're continuing to draw the members, if we wanted to make sure that we had the same angle here as we do for the member coming down this direction, down here, instead of trying to draw that in or find the coordinate or use a relative member function, we can actually just use the mirror function here. So all we need to know is the X coordinate. So we're seeing the X coordinate is four. So what we'll do is we'll click on the member, go to edit, operations, mirror, and actually we're mirroring this in the Y, Z plane, the Y and the out of plane Z. So we'll do Y, Z plane, and the mirror plane a location along the X axis is four. We'll turn off these supports, and now we've duplicated this member across, and we can see that it's added the node here along the length of the beam, and now we can continue drawing. So let's draw another member to the midpoint of this member. And there we go. Now we have all of our bracing members. So the last thing we want to do for this profile is add our support down here. So we'll type in the node because we know the node coordination. So it's 20.5 in the X minus 2.25 in the Y. Hit apply. Now if we were to go and draw up, we notice that it's not actually in line with the roof. And if you see the structure on the article, this roof member actually extends down and connects with it down here. So we can use the relative member function again to extend it, but we can also use the duplicate member function. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to draw this up past where it's gonna connect then I'm going to select the roof member, select control D, and we're gonna use a linear repeat operation, one operation. We're going to be using the member axis A to B. And this is basically telling us that we're gonna pick a member and we're gonna pick our, the own member that we selected, so member eight, and we're determining the direction that we're copying it. So in line with the roof direction would be in line it's in its own uh, from node six to nine. So if we select the member that we're actually copying in the member ID here, we have member axis A to B. Distance between our partitions, it's gonna automatically fill the member length. So it's basically gonna take this member and copy it down here from this end going here. So what we can do is uncheck these and we'll submit. Now we see that we basically just extended this, almost like a cantilever, extended this beam this way. And then similar to what we've done before, we can just select these two members intersect them, and now we can delete the excess here. And now we have the geometry for our structure's profile. The last thing I wanna do before we copy this over is I'm gonna add some points here so we can model some purlins. I'm gonna to go to split member. I'm going to click on the only create nodes button, and I'm going to divide the member into equal parts, and we'll say four. Now we have our, there was already a node at the midpoint, so we have a couple more points here we can uh, draw across.
So now that we have our, our profile with all of the nodes that we want, all of the member geometry that we want, before we actually duplicate it over, let's add and apply all of our sections so that when we duplicate it over, the other profile has the, has the exact same uh, sections and everything. So I'm gonna add some sections into the model and I'll be back in a second. All right, so we're back with some sections here. Now this is just gonna be basically manipulating some of the visibility settings to make sure we uh, can select multiple members and apply sections to multiple members at one time. So we have a couple of HSS tubes here and then a few angles. So let's start applying our sections. Right out of the gate, obviously, because we modeled it before we put any sections in here, everything is going to be section one. So we want to try and apply sections other than section one. So our two columns here are going to be the HSS five by five by quarter, or that section one. And now let's just start selecting members and applying the sections. So the most obvious way is to just hold control and select the members you want to apply. And now with multiple members selected, you can use the multi-edit members function over here to just select a section. So for us, this will be section five. Just type in section five there. Go ahead and hit apply. And now we have those section changes there. Let's continue on here. If you want, you can also use the drag and select method too. So for instance, we want all of these members to be a single section. We can use this drag and select function. And now because we've also selected some nodes, the multi-edit members is not gonna pop up automatically, but we can click on the members button over here. And now we're in the multi-edit members portion of this. And for this, we wanna use section two. Hit apply. And now we have that there as well. Using the other way, we can go this direction. And now we're grabbing members that are only contained in here. But we're gonna actually just use this way again. Going to members, selecting the ID we want, hitting apply. Now in terms of our profile, this is the sections that we want. Now we can finally duplicate it over. So let's select the entire structure by going control A and then control D to duplicate. We want to use linear oper linear type, one operation or one repetition, distance between repetitions or the width of the structure is, is 12 feet. And we want to go in the positive or negative Z axis. We're going to choose negative Z axis. We're going to uncheck any loads or support connection uh, repeated because we don't have any. And we're going to make sure we select the collect, connect nodes with members button. Hit submit. Now we have our other profile and you can see that it's matched the section IDs on, on both sides. Now from here, all you would need to do is, again, manipulate the visibility properties to delete any members coming across that you don't want in your project. So for us, it'd be these bottom three here, and there would be it. So let's finish applying our sections by using those visibility properties. And we'll apply this member is, oops, apply this member is section four. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll add the cross bracing in now that we're in 3D space. So the pen tool doesn't only work in 2D space, it also works in 3D space. So let's grab our node down here, come up to our node here, hit escape, and then do the opposite. And then this would be the last member we want to, last couple members we want to change. We'll go to members again, and this would be section three. Now, finally, the last thing I want to do is we'll put it in the front view so we can add some support to our structure. So usually what I would do is I would put it in the elevation view here and then I drag from the right. That way you're only selecting the nodes that are at the bottom. Because we have a, a kind of a grade member here, uh, it's gonna select that as well. But we actually only wanna apply supports to these four nodes here. So if we drag from the right, we can see that if we move our structure back around, we're selecting those four nodes there. So what we can do after they're selected is we can actually right click add supports. Now we have all of our nodes identified here and we'll identify some 3D pin supports here because the rest of our uh, model is fairly rigid. Go ahead and hit apply. So that's going to wrap up this video highlighting some modeling tricks and tips uh, associated with the modeling a greenhouse article on our website. We hope you found it useful. Make sure to check out our software documentation for more information.